Hi, good morning everyone. So today we're going to talk about the thyroid gland. A couple of months ago we launched a video on how people could automatically take their thyroid health into their own hands. And over the last one year we've had thousands of people, literally thousands of people across the globe who have been on thyroid medication for 15 years, 20 years, 10 years and 5 years and now they are no longer on that thyroid medication with their doctors in the loop. They didn't make a decision to get off that medication just because someone told them to do. They made lifestyle changes. They understood what it is, what the trigger is behind them having low thyroid levels or high thyroid levels. And they fixed that. They filled the gap. And today, there are thousands of people across the world. Many of them will be watching this right now. Many of them are on my page who will tell you that they are no longer on thyroid medication and they keep constantly checking their TSH, their T3 and their T4 levels, including their TG and their TG antibody every three months and their levels are perfectly in order because they made lifestyle changes. Now don't get me wrong, you can't just get off your medication. There may be several reasons why you need to continue to be on that medication. So I'm not here to tell you dump your thyroid medication. I'm not here to tell you that your doctor is wrong putting you on a thyroid medication. You need to make an informed decision in relation to your body, your lifestyle, and your environment, and then decide how you wanna help your body get off that thyroid medication if you can. Now there are a lot of thyroid cases called Hashimoto's which is caused because of an autoimmune disorder. So while you focus on fixing your autoimmune disorder or fixing your gut, there is a possibility, like I said, where thousands of people no longer have Hashimoto's today. They no longer have thyroid problems. But today, you'll find that video on my Facebook page or on my YouTube page, or I'm sure someone who's watching this right now is going to share it for the rest of you. I'm here to talk about something else today in relation to thyroid. I spoke a few days about statistical deception. Every blood report that we do can help us diagnose a sickness that we may have. Every blood test that we, can, that we do serves as a benchmark to tell us what's happening in our body. But in no way is it, is it conclusive enough for us to be labeled with a disease or put on a medication for the rest of our life without proper diagnosis or proper investigation. So many people today have a thyroid problem and they believe, they believe that they can never fix their thyroid problem. Now let's give you an example today. If you've been stressed, chronically stressed over the last one week, 10 days, one month, and you come and you do your thyroid test today, guess what? Your TSH levels are going to be low. You are going to have an incorrect or an improper conversion of your T4 to T3. Now does this mean that your problem is the thyroid gland? Or does this mean that that chronic stress that has been in your life over the last few weeks and months is the cause of your thyroid gland producing the wrong levels? So here you do, here you go and you get a tablet that you need to be on the rest of your be on for the rest of your life to treat a symptom which is caused by chronic stress and that's what i mean by there are thousands of people in the world right now who are on medication treating the symptom and they will be on medication for a lifetime unless they start addressing the root cause of their particular thyroid problem which is stress and we're going to understand that today On the top of your kidney, you have two glands. These are your adrenal glands. Believe me when I say most people are not suffering from hypothyroidism today. They're not suffering from a thyroid problem. They're suffering from something called AFS, adrenal fatigue syndrome. And many people genuinely have a thyroid problem. Let's not say that that doesn't exist. Many people have a genuine thyroid problem, but I'm saying most people, and this is for you to now introspect into your life, to look into your life, and your body constantly gives you biofeedback every day for you to make your own decision about your health and your body. Let's get back to those little glands called the, glands called the adrenal glands. They have one function, many functions, but the main function is to produce cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone that we need, but we don't need too much of it. We need cortisol for us to respond effectively to stress. When we produce cortisol, there are a lot of hormones that rebalance in our body. There are a lot of hormones to get good that go up and some hormones come down to protect us, to enable our bodies to go through that stressful period. It reflects in our digestion, 
our insulin, the way our body manages sugar levels and insulin, our heart, our liver, our kidney, our brain, our energy levels, our digestion, everything, everything is related to cortisol. So cortisol is good for us. Without cortisol, we cannot live. But now, <clears throat> the problem is when these adrenal glands are constantly producing cortisol. As it constantly produces cortisol, the body gets more and more tired, more and more fatigued. It can no longer deal with stress. It can no longer deal with your tiredness and fatigue, no matter how much of coffee or how much of stimulants you keep putting in your body so that you can keep going and keep going and keep going. Your adrenal glands start burning out. They start getting fatigued. Now that excess cortisol, which is chronically high because you're constantly stressed and constantly worried and constantly anxious, automatically self-defense mechanism of the human body. The role of the thyroid gland is to control metabolism in your body. When your body can no longer cope with stress and it's constantly tired, your body will decide to start reducing thyroid function. Your body will decide, because of constantly elevated cortisol levels, to reduce the production of thyroxine in your body. It will start reducing the conversion of T4 to T3, which is necessary for your thyroid gland, to slow you down so it can conserve energy, to slow you down because you're moving too fast, to slow you down because the human body can no longer cope with your stress. But your mind believes that you can go on and on and on because that's what social media tells you. That's what your bosses tell you. That's what entrepreneurs tell you that work hard, sleep less, coffee, stimulants, stay awake, eat more food, get energy, and that is success. That is far from success. Success is when you can build and you can maintain your health, not building and losing your health to compromise and to sacrifice building success. That's the wrong message going out to everyone. Study harder, stay awake all night, don't sleep, study and you'll get great grades. You will also become sick. You will also stress out your adrenal glands. What's the biggest problem we have amongst teenage girls today? PCOD, ovarian issues, mood swings, depression, anxiety, caused by high cortisol levels, less sleep, over-exercising, peer pressure, stress. They automatically get PCOD because their adrenal glands are now fatigued. They cannot produce the right amount of thyroxine, and that's what happens. Look at middle-aged women, and look at menopausal women. It's the same common ground, stress and anxiety. So the more cortisol you keep producing at an elevated level, the less thyroxine you have. Now you tell me, is it the pill that you need, or is it a lifestyle change that you need to reduce your stress? Thousands of people who use the thyroid protocol, which revolves around raw coconut oil, selenium, zinc. That's in a nutshell. It, of course, is individual from person to person, depending on what they eat, how they live, and their stress levels. And meditation and yoga or anything, even a hobby or music or dance, anything that can break that chronic stress in your life, and you will heal your thyroid. If it's an autoimmune trigger thyroid, then you heal your gut, you heal your thyroid in most cases. So... Cortisol can be great for us and it can also be our curse when we constantly produce it. So ladies who have thyroid problems and who are over-exercising, you are creating more adrenal fatigue. Heavy training like CrossFit and anything in excess will not allow you to heal your thyroid. And in fact, in many women, it can bring on a thyroid problem. Okay. So if you are over-exercising or you are training and you don't have the right recovery and rest, which makes sleep so important because if your body wakes up tired, you anyway wake up with high cortisol levels and then you keep stimulating your adrenal glands with false stimulation like caffeine and tea and all of that stuff. Caffeine constantly, deplete, constantly makes your adrenal glands produce more cortisol. And over here we're trying to balance cortisol, but you're taking a stimulant to keep you awake because you didn't sleep well and because you have to go to work or because you have to hit the gym and train because you believe that you can punish your body with exercise and burn fat by exercising more. But what we're doing is we're creating adrenal fatigue, a slower thyroid, and which is why you struggle to lose weight. 
The reason why people with thyroid disorder struggle to lose weight is because your own body is fighting you. You're trying to lose weight and you're trying to punish it with exercise and fad diets, but you're only putting your body through more stress, your adrenal glands are producing more cortisol, and your body is naturally producing less thyroxine for self-defense. Your body does not care about what's in your mind, about how you want to look, your size zero figure or your six pack. Your six pack, not six pack, two pack, that's my favorite rapper. So your body doesn't care about that. Your body cares about survival. So it will do anything and everything to do to survive. So let's take all the women and men there who go low carb. Yeah, the bad carbs are bad for us. But when you go low carb, you put your body through adrenal fatigue. Because if you worked out and run and trained, your body requires energy to heal. That energy comes from carbohydrates. There's a different energy from carbohydrates. There's a different energy from protein. There's a different energy from fats, which is why a whole food has a little bit of all of them. A little bit of all. Whatever nature's given you has a little bit of carbohydrates, a little bit of fat, and a little bit of protein. That is how nature is designed. Not some processed food lobby or manufacturing company telling you what they think is right for your body because it's right for their profit margins. So again, if you cut down carbohydrates and you're training hard, number one, you will never lose that flab around your midsection. You will never lose that. And number two, you will put yourself through adrenal fatigue. For some people, it may be a thyroid problem. For other people, it'll be a hormonal imbalance that causes irritability, frustration. Put a woman on low carb for a long time and observe her mood. Put a man on low carb for a long, long time and observe his mood. Anger, irritability, frustration, a feeling of depression, a feeling of chronic fatigue. Do you really need to punish your body that much to lose weight? No, you need discipline. You need discipline and everyone is overlooking discipline because we're so used to comfort, we want more and more and more and more comfort and variety. If everyone decided today to go back to their normal breakfast, lunch and dinner of eating something in the right quantity with a little bit of dal, your lentil, your green vegetables, your raw vegetables, your fruits, nuts and seeds, you lose weight. But we can't do that. Why? Because we crave variety. That's too boring for us. We don't want to do that. So when you have discipline, all your problems get sorted. That's exercise. So if you're overtraining with a thyroid problem, you're doing the worst thing. Most of, most of our patients and clients around the world who solved their thyroid problems did it with walking and yoga initially until their stress levels started reducing. So if you're this person who's working nine to five, constantly stressed, traveling, sleeping less, recovery, and then punishing your body in the gym with a one hour workout, guess what? You are not gonna get the results that you want. You're gonna create more problems in your body. So a walk and yoga while your adrenal glands heal and your thyroid gland heals. And as that gets better, you'll find you have more energy. Your body will now say, do a more intensive workout. I'm ready for it. But if you're pushing your body to do an intensive workout, you're going against your biofeedback. You will have repercussions. Your body will tell you when you're ready to graduate to the next level of intensity in your workout problem program. So that brings us to sleep. If you're sleeping less, you have a hormonal imbalance, be it thyroid, be it testosterone, be it men trying to build muscle with less sleep, it's impossible. If you don't have the right testosterone levels in your body, you cannot build muscle. No amount of whey protein will help you build muscle if you don't have testosterone in your body. And all the injections and the tablets of testosterone that you think you can take will only, only make your sex drive lower and lower, your, libi your libido lower and lower, your bones softer and softer, and a whole hormonal imbalance. There is no shortcut to building a great body. That brings me to anxiety. Today, so many people are constantly anxious and constantly worried. When you're constantly anxious and worried, guess what happens? Your adrenal glands are constantly producing cortisol. So if I wake up worried about where my child is going to be, what my child is going to eat, or my husband, or my wife, or whoever it is, or my spouse, if I'm constantly worried, I'm constantly producing cortisol. Now you know what happens when we constantly produce cortisol. So now, do you really have a disease called hypothyroidism, or do you have a condition called chronic stress? That's for each of you to decide. And most people, most people will say, I'd rather take the pill because I don't have time to meditate or I don't have time. This is my life. Excuses. You have a choice and you have an excuse. You have a choice and you have an excuse. It's as simple as that. Do what's right for your body. Let's, let's, let's talk about anxiety and worry for a while because this is an illusion that our mind creates. I challenge anyone 
Think about things that have worried you in the past or make you anxious. And tell me, did those incidents ever occur in your life? Most people, most people will say no. Worry is a down payment on a problem that you may never, never have. We worry more and we're anxious when we don't trust the process of life, when we live in fear and insecurity. But when we trust, when we trust that life will take care of us, we automatically reduce anxiety and worry. We don't get rid of it completely. All of us have worry and anxiety living in a world like today, which is so unsafe, which is so contaminated. But we have to trust life all the time. Like I said, you can change the way you eat. You can go vegetarian, you can go vegan, you can eat you know, organic, all of that stuff. But we can't change the air that we breathe. All of us breathe the same pollutants and carcinogens in the air every single day. We can't change that, but we can trust life will take care of us if we do our bit of living healthy. We got to trust life. And when we trust, automatically anxiety and worry reduces. Try this. Try trusting life. You have no control over what your child is going to become. No matter how much you want your child to become a doctor or an engineer, or you want your daughter to get married to an ex particular person, that's all in your mind. You have no control at the end of the day. And if you won because of dominance and control, you've produced a very, very unhappy child. And we all know that today. It's all out there in the world. So all you can do is do your best as a parent, as an individual, whoever you may be, do your best and surrender the rest to life. Because we can't live in peace unless we trust the process of life. So anyone with a thyroid problem, the first thing you look at is your stress, your sleep, yes, your food and nutrition, of course, the way you're exercising, the thoughts that are constantly going on in your mind, and you change this. And I promise you, most people with a thyroid problem will heal their thyroid naturally. For the thyroid protocol, you can watch my video on YouTube. Everyone have a great day. Hit that reset button. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep. I posted a challenge on my page this morning on dry fasting. It's now my 16th hour of dry fasting, and I cannot tell you, I feel better than ever any any fast I've ever done be it a water fast be it an intermittent fast be it a raw till lunch this is the first time I've done a dry fast I spent two days in Dubai over the weekend sitting with a couple of people in the royal family who have explained the science behind dry fasting in connection with religion they're not talking about Islam they're talking about religion as one and they spoke about the science behind dry fasting. I landed, I landed yesterday evening. I started a dry fast. I'm not hungry. My energy levels are fantastic. I'm not craving. My mind is clear. I can't tell you how fantastic dry fasting is. So that's the challenge I posted on the page. Give it a shot. I didn't have the guts to do it in the day, so I tried it at night. I started at 6 in the evening yesterday, and I'm just going to go on and on and on until my body says, stop right now. Not a drop of